Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more FIFA 17 career mode. We're playing a Celtic. This is episode 4. Guys, in today's episode, we have a sensational January transfer window. We sign 11, yes, 11 wonder kids from across Europe. I'm sort of blown away as to how many we managed to sign on loan. But regardless, guys... Okay, if you guys still are enjoying this Celtic career and would like to see more, the best thing you guys can do is leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new around here. So yeah, I really do hope you guys are enjoying this Celtic career mode as much as I am. I'm having an absolute blast. Also, in today's episode, we have two matches. So, why did I bring in so many of these wonder kids on loan? To be honest, I'm surprised that I was able to. I'm surprised these top European sides uh, allowed me to. Now... At the start of this Celtic career, I bought in Darren Fletcher, I bought in Michael Carrick, I bought in McGeady, I bought in Long, and I bought in Brady. Except for Brady, those other four, and Yen Long, um, they're old, <laughs> essentially. And FIFA 17 is relentless as soon as a player hits over 30. So even though we've, we've got our chemistry, we've built up, uh, we've been playing really, really good football up until, ja up until January, we're going to have worse quality players than we did at the start of the season. And those stats and overall ratings are going to decline massively. So, I've made the decision to bring in some new players. Now, obviously, I'm playing a Celtic. We don't have the financial capital to bring in, let alone one, like, one of these players officially. So, we're going to have to bring them out on loan. Now, I am only planning on doing probably one season with Celtic. My main objective is to push and try and win the Premier League, try and win the Champions League in our first season. With these young players now, with this fresh injection in January, I, re I reckon we can do that. The thing is, some of these players have higher overall ratings than some of my starting 11, which just blows my mind as the, like, the AI would allow me to just steal up these players. So, I'm going to go through with you guys now the 11 that I've signed. More so squad rotation. I guarantee you there will be a couple of them that I'm not going to play with. But, obviously signing these players in on loan. If you're going to do like four seasons with Celtic, obviously signing these guys in on loan, you're better off having your own players than making a profit on them. But if you're only going to be having them for one season, you might as well bring them in. So, we brought in 11 players here today. Uh, I think nine of them were on loan. Then we signed two on permanent deals. So, we brought in Marcus. Rashford, who's 77 rated. I'm going to stick to my starting 11 um, for the majority of it. However, bringing these guys on, 75th, 60th minute, we need a rotation because we've got a lot of games. We've got a Champions League match midweek that we need to focus on. We can send these guys up. And I'm just sort of blown away as the top sides would allow them to go out on loan. So we've signed Marcus Rashford, Dembele from Borussia Dortmund. We've signed Renato Sanchez on loan, who looks excellent in that Celtic kit. It kind of looks similar to his uh, when he was playing for Sporting back in the day. Jean-Luigi Don Narama, uh, the goalkeeper, 77 rated. That's insane. And Christian Pulisic. We also managed to sign an 80 rated Leroy Sane. Now, I reckon we signed Leroy Sane on loan purely because he was injured. Uh, he was injured for a couple of weeks when I signed him. So maybe the Man City AI was like, okay, he's on loan. This club wants to take a chance on him being injury prone, um, which I'm more than happy to do if we get an 80 rated Leroy Sane coming fresh off the bench. Okay, moving along now, we also managed to sign uh, Timothy Fosu Mensa. He can play sort of right back, centre back. We've also managed to get uh, Lindelof, who signed for Manchester United, the Swede. And then we managed to sign Johnston, the Manchester United man, on a permanent deal, alongside Jordan Pickford for Sunderland. So we did have a little bit of money towards the end. So I thought we might as well bring in Jordan Pickford if we do do season two. Uh, we'll probably we'll, we'll play with Jean Luigi Donnarama because he is well taller and he's a three overall rating higher as well. And we also managed to bring in Regani, the youngster from Juventus, who is a centre back. So we've got a couple of offers here for Gordon. We probably will have those players day. No, we will have those players debuts in today's episode. Not everyone's, but the majority of them. But to have Marcus Rashford on the bench is going to be insane, and that is how we are going to win the uh, the Champions League, hopefully this season. <laughs> We're going to put ourselves in the best position to do so. But for one season, bring in these players. Uh, we we. We re this is how we're going to try and hopefully try and win the Premier League and uh, the Champions League uh, without like a financial takeover either. I could have done a financial takeover at the start, but I'd rather I'd rather not to be honest. 
I kind of feel like it's cheating, even though it's like exploiting the game by getting pre-contract players and signing these players online, which is like ridiculous, but the AI is coded to do that, I guess. So Emery Chan is signed for Spurs, which is huge. <laughs> um, Markovic has left Turin to join Everton, and Gilfie Sigurdsson has left Swansea to join Chelsea, the former Tottenham Hotspur man. Nadir, 24 years of age, 72 overall. We're going to be selling him because he's actually on pretty high wages, the Turkish man. We probably can bring him in for um, maybe a couple of other loanees. Now, let's talk about Gordon, uh, my goalkeeper. The thing is, right, I am inclined to sell him because he has had a pretty decent season. I would rather play Jean-Luigi Donnarama uh, instead of him, which I will be doing. But... Um, I keep on accepting these deals. However, the other clubs can't accept his wages because they're like £60,000 a week. They're huge. Lacazette has left Olympic Lyon for a huge fee to join Chelsea for £54 million. I'm currently negotiating for a new goalkeeper here. I do manage to make the decision on Sam Johnson, who is like for £800,000. I managed to bring up Jordan Pickford for £4 million. Which is quite a good deal, if I'm being honest. I had an option for Testagen, and I also had an option for Pantilamon, who I quite like. He's like one of the tallest goalkeepers in FIFA. He's absolutely huge, and I thought he'd do good stuff for this Watford side. He was sort of one of the options. 29 years of age, the former Man City man. Um, I was sort of, yeah, I, I was more inclined to go for Pickford because he's a hell of a lot younger. But Pantilamon, I did play with him on FIFA Ultimate Team and he was actually really quite good. Just because you have big he is, he's an awesome shot stopper. Pantilamon did accept the contract, but we did go for Pickford in the end. Stefan Johansson, 73 overall, 26 years, years of age. Now, the reason why I'm going to be selling him to Bournemouth, the Norwegian, the Scandinavian, uh, he's worth £2.9 million. I quite like him. However, bringing in all these loanees, he's probably going to get his game time gut cut. But the main thing, the main thing, guys, is the board wanted to sell him over my head. So um, they were going to sell him anyway, regardless this January window. So I had to sell him for my highest plus price because that sort of sucks when like the player wants to leave. It's always a bit of a gamble. Like, okay, do you accept the deal or do you let the board sell them over your head for like a ridiculously like a ridiculously cut price? Jordan Pickford there, six foot two, Englishman, quite good. Coming to the final six hours of the uh, January transfer window, and then we'll get stuck into some matches. So, uh, four million pounds for Stefan. Uh, Victor Lindelof, Kurt Zuma as well. Oh, I forgot I, I signed Kurt Zuma. <laughs> I forgot about him as well. Maybe it was 12, roughly, that number. But we're going to be selling Johansson for four million pounds, 26-year-old. He's only 73 overall. For, for four million pounds, I think that's actually quite good. Um, a couple of the top sides did reject like Arsenal for Hector Bellerin, Samuel Umtiti for Barcelona. But I'm blown away as to Man City and Manchester United would allow, and Zuma, allow them to leave. And Regani, like, they're top youngsters. They're going to let them go out on loan. Ter Stegen, um, Stekelenburg, not Ter Stegen. Uh, Stekelenburg was an option, same with Pantillamon, but I went with Pickford. But uh, Lindelof, who signed for United, uh, we're going to be picking him up on loan. And Kurt Zuma, who would have thought? And Regani. We're gonna. I want to try and keep my starting eleven as close to possible as it would have been playing this season. But bringing in these youth players as squad rotational players, let them play other fixtures off camera. It will be good for us just to let the first team. But some of these overall rated players, especially some in the defense, we're definitely going to bring on, especially goalkeeper as well. Coming to the last five hours, um, one Fernando Quintero has left uh, Porto to join Atletico Madrid. Pretty huge deal for him. We've sold the Norwegian to Bournemouth. Kurt Zuma is going to be coming in as well on loan. Regani and Kurt Zuma do have quite high uh, wages, £80,000, £70,000 roughly a week as well. And I'll show you guys, I'll show you the newly signed men in their uh, Celtic kit. So here is Zuma for you guys. Here is uh, Lindelof, John Sainz. We'll, we'll start, we'll, we'll redo my starting 11. And also, during the season, once we start playing them, get, get a, getting them a couple of matches under their belt, they're going to go up in stats compared to Michael Carrick and Darren Fletcher, who are past their 30s and are going to be going down in stats, which sucks. Correa, 
has left Atletico Madrid to join Bayer Leverkusen and Chanaloglu, I think that's how you say his name. The Turkishman has left Bayer Leverkusen to join Liverpool, uh, which uh, it, there's a bit of a controversy going on with him in real life, isn't he? He's been banned for like three or four months, which is... Yeah, it, it kind of it kind of punishes by Leverkusen that, but in saying that, they would have known that the elite. Well, technically, he was contracted to some. It was contracted to some Turkish club, from what I can remember. Then he left um, Anatolia and moved to Germany, uh, but the contract was still valid. It took like four years to go through or whatever, and then it was found that it was an official contract that he signed as a youngster, and then Bayer Leverkusen got banned. So I feel bad for Bayer Leverkusen, who have basically lost their player, but in saying that, they would have been 100% aware of the situation, but in saying that, they shouldn't have been punished, really. Um, but I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below about the Chanoglu, uh, Chanoglu I think that's how you say his name, uh, Controversy. Let me know in the comments, because I'm sure there's some of you who are a lot more, a lot more informed than me. But guys, let's get stuck into the two matches of today's episode. Come on, Celtic. Okay, guys, welcome to the first match of today's episode against Liverpool at home. We're going to be hosting them in Glasgow. Then we have a match against Arsenal. So let's have a look at the league table, the top goal scorers, and then we're going to be going through my starting 11. And I'm going to try and keep as many of the first team players that were playing at the start of the season uh, now. But we're currently first in the Premier League, followed by United, Stoke, Swansea, Arsenal, and Chelsea. We're only head of United because... Let's talk about the top sides as well. We managed to win 1-0 over United. We played that a couple episodes ago. We managed to draw against Chelsea 2-2. Um, and we also managed to lose against Spurs 1-0. Uh, but we're only ahead of United because we managed to win from a penalty. Stoke a third, which is bonkers. Seven points behind. Swansea a fourth which is crazy, seeing they've lost their main man, Gilfie Sigurdsson, who is the second top goal scorer, followed by Delefeu up top in first, Wijnaldum third, Martial fourth, uh, McGeady and Sinclair with eight goals as well. Liverpool are currently sitting in 13th, Spurs in 15th, that's crazy, Man City in 7th, Chelsea in 6th. So, we're going to be playing the 4-3-2-1. I'm going to have Shane Long leading the line. I'm going to drop Sinclair and McGeady to the bench. We'll play Sane on the left and Dembele on the right. I'd rather play Dembele here on the right. Uh, we're going to, we, we need to keep as many of those Premier League proven um, just senior players in the squad because you can't win a Premier League title with a bunch of youngsters in the squad. That's why I've still got Michael Carrick in there, Snodgrass and Long. I'm going to play Sanchez in the defensive midfield. We'll drop uh, uh, Fletcher. I, I love Darren Fletcher, but he's 75 overall. He's going down in stats significantly. He's 33 years of age. Same with Carrick as well. But Sanchez, who looks exceptionally good in this Celtic kit. It's because of his sporting days, I know. We're going to play Zuma as my right back. We're going to drop, of course, Lustig. And we're going to be dropping Torre, and we're going to be playing Rogani. I'm going to keep Chenko because he's 77 overall, 25 years of age. He's very quite good. We're going to be keeping Brady as left back, who's had a superb season. We're going to play Jean-Luigi Donnarama, 6 foot 5, hard as fuck. Um, we're going to be playing him. We could rotate him with Pickford. We've got Marcus Rashford on the bench, who is higher rated than Shane Long. But like I said, I don't want to really put too many youngsters in the squad. I'll be giving Griffiths, Sinclair, McGeady game time. We've got Lindelof, who is a higher rated than Chenko, but we'll probably rotate him if we need him. We have Pulisic here as well. We've got Fletcher. I did say that we're probably not going to play everyone that we signed, just maybe just like for the, the top six games, the Champions League matches. Fosu here, he's quite good, but um, he's just on the reserves for the time being. That's pretty much it. No point in playing Roberts. He's on loan. Um... Compared to the others, he's not as well through his development. So, Chenko's going to be the captain. Uh, Snodgrass on the... Yeah, I want Snodgrass on the left. Who's my best right free kick taker? Oh, God. I don't have really anyone who's exceptionally good on the right. I probably might as well just leave Snodgrass then, eh? Okay, so we have Michael Carrick with the right ball in, and we'll have Snodgrass with the left. Actually, how good's Dembele now? We'll leave it like that. Okay, this is the squad we're going to be playing. So, Long leading the line, Sane on the left, Dembele, Snodgrass, Sanchez, Carrick in the midfield, Brady, Chenko, Regani, Zuma, right back, and Gianluigi Donnarama. 
as my goalkeeper. Let's get stuck into the Reds here today. Hopefully, we can pick up the three points here today against Jurgen Klopp. It is showers. Anthony Taylor is the referee. Let's get stuck in. Let's host them at Celtic Park. Okay, guys, welcome to the piss pouring rain in Glasgow. Zuma, Sane, Dembele, Ragani, Jean Luigi Donnarama are going to be having their debuts here today. Let's see who Jurgen Klopp has fielded. He's fielded a 4 3 3, Roberto Firmino leading the line, Wijnaldum on the right, Sturridge on the right, no. Uh, Mane, okay. Leva, Medel, Lalana. No, Henderson. They are playing Gary Medel, who they recently signed. Nathaniel Klein at right back. Moreno is left back. No, James Milner. Uh, Sarko, Ragnar. Uh, they're not playing Lovren or Matip, okay. And they're playing Loris Curris in goal over Mingale. Okay, Liverpool have the kickoff. Let's get stuck into the Reds. Snodgrass. Oh, trying to wait for the run of Dembele. But uh, Zuma's made it. Shane Long. Come on. Slip through Leroy Sane. He's somehow gotten to this. Jostling for position. Gets the ball. Dembele has just put Shane Long on the counter-attack. Sarko's going to catch him, though. We'll try to play this around. Dembele. Snodgrass. Sanchez. Carrick finds Sane. Ah, oh, Ragnar's saved. Long. Finds Leroy Sna Sane. Trying to be a little bit too skillful here, if I'm being honest. Sane pops it into the box to Dembele. Rises to the occasion. That was an exceptional header from the young S Frenchman. Oh, I think, it actually, was it Long who got to it, was it? Oh, it might have been Long. I thought Dembele got to it. Oh, regardless, we've got a corner kick here with Snodgrass. Snodgrass whips it into the box. It's going to find the head of Chenko. Carrick. Puts it to Sanchez, who gets a venomous volley off. You're joking. Kurt Zuma picks up the grabs. And of, uh, out of all the youngsters who have bags of talent, like going forward at, in an attacking sense, it was Kurt Zuma. Sanchez gets his curving shot blocked. Chenko finds him. And we're 1-0 up against Liverpool. What an exciting squad this Celtic side is. Exceptional. Snodgrass pressing and harrowing forward. Oh, what the fuck? How was Shane Long? Oh, Dembele with the roulette. How was Shane Long found him? That's a red card. Surely that's a red card for Moreno. I'll be blown away if it isn't. It's got to be a red. He's winding up for it here. Dembele with a superb roulette. Oh, it's a yellow. Get the fuck out of here, ref. That was exceptional play by... Um by Dembele. Who's my best? I was going to... Oh, okay. Well, let Snodgrass take it. But I would have really liked Dembele to go. But Snodgrass uh, couldn't get it up and over the wall. Dembele has just found Snodgrass. Oh, Shane Long. Very nice. Dembele. Sane. Come on, Long. Get it over the top to Dembele here. It's nearly... Oh. This high-octane attack, the 4-3... The 4 3 2 one has been exceptional. Oh, is this Chenko? Uh, Liverpool, hold on. Oh, Lalana with some silky skills there. That's got to be a foul. Right, it's just before the 60s. Time to make some substitutions here now. I want to bring on my substitutions a little bit earlier. Let's bring on Rashford for long. Um, we've got Lindelof. We could bring him on for Chenko just to give a bit more structure in defence. We're only 1-0 up. Uh, we've got Christian Pulisic and we have McGeady. I think I might wait a little bit longer for McGeady and Sinclair. But we'll bring on Rashford and Victor Lindelof now. Sane, oh, finds Rashford, who slips through, how is Dembele still on this, keep going Dembele, oh, he's beaten the defence, oh my god, he shot it wide, that would have been one of my favourite goals, I love Dembele on the ball, he's so skillful, does his acceleration and decrease, he's just smacked it wide though, you're joking, Liverpool have a corner kick here late, but there's no one at the halfway line, if we can get a favourable out... <gasps> <sighs> Shit. Liverpool have equalised. It's 1-1. Late in the death. It is Ragnar Calavan. Damn it. We were holding on to this lead for so long. Goes and runs with celebrates with uh, Jurgen Klopp. Which, but, but, what sort of pisses me off? I'm going to have a fucking rant here. 
Okay, right. Liverpool are really in mid-table. They're struggling. They, they definitely... Oh, it's a deflection officer. But they're not going to make top four. However, they see Celtic as a weaker opponent. We're, we're, we're first in the, um, the Premier League for a reason. We're currently first... But because we're technically, the AI thinks, oh, okay, Celtic have a lower squad rating than Liverpool. We're not going to play our strongest side. Um, and like, getting a draw against Celtic is pretty humiliating. But, like, as you can see, for Liverpool, not us, but as you can see, they brought on Walker, who they had on the bench. They got Coutinho, and they've only just now, um, yeah, brought them on. It's just mind-blowing, to say the least. Shit. Daniel Sturridge on the counter-attack here. Regani's gonna have to go up and get him, and he's fucked it up. No, 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 no. The full-time whistle has blown, and we have claimed a 1-1 draw at home against Liverpool. At the end of the day, a 1-1 draw isn't good, but we really deserve to win that. 9-7 on target. They only had 4-1. I'm happy with the draw. The thing is, with this Celtic career so far, as you guys would have seen against the top European sides and the top four sides, we're getting... 1-0 draws, we're getting 1-0 victories, which is absolutely fine. I'm happy that we're not blowing away teams or, like, losing horrendously. We're, like, getting points where we need to. So let's face Arsenal now and get into that match. Okay, guys, welcome to the second match of today's episode against Arsenal away. We're going down to London, uh, to the Emirates. So hopefully we can get a win against the Gunners or a draw here today. Any amount of points is going to be... Uh, Really, really good for our season. Now, as you can see here, we're still currently first, but United have a game in hand. Um, so we're still ahead of them by five points, but they do have a game in hand. If they win it, they're going to get a lot closer. Stoke are still third, Swansea are fourth, Arsenal are fifth, uh, Man City are fourth. Met. Okay, there's just a lot of cups and European matches, right? Because, like, Arsenal are in... Yeah, what the hell? Arsenal have... Yeah, two a game in hand. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, no. Okay, it's only a one game but Stoke have played four. <laughs> okay, so then we have a technically have a game in hand. Okay, I was a little bit confused there. It's all right. Um, no one up there for Arsenal, no, in the top goal scorers. Hopefully we can try and get some points here today. We managed to narrowly lose against uh, Liverpool just then, which it sucked, but a 1-1 draw against Liverpool is not anything to be ashamed about. Right, okay. Um, we need to do a bit of rotation, I think. Marcus Rashford loves to score against Arsenal, so I think I'm going to start him instead of Long. Um, we've got McGeady, we've got Sinclair, Pulisic, and Lindelof. I think I'll leave everyone on. I, I quite liked how he played in the last match, but we need to be a little bit better going forward. Let's get stuck into Arsene Wenger's Arsenal here today. Let's play in our home kit. They can play in their red. It's overcast at the Emirates. Let's get stuck into the match. Okay, guys, welcome to the Emirates. Who would have thought we would have been in this, uh... <laughs> well, why has he got blue gov gloves there, the Ox? Okay, that's odd. Yeah, um, why... You wouldn't have thought we would have been in this position, leading the Premier League, and if we can beat Arsenal here today, we can extend our lead. Let's see who the Gunners are fielding. Hopefully, it's a strong squad. A 4-2-3-1, Giroud leading the line. Okay, that's quite solid. Santi Gazzola at the cam. No Ozil. They've got Walcott on the left, Oxlade-Chamberlain on the right. No Xhaka, no Ramsey um, or Sanchez. <laughs> They're playing Monreal left back. They're playing Gabriel Palista, Koscielny, and who the hell is that right back? Sl Slominkov and Peter Chekingo. Who the hell is Slominkov or whatever his name is? Hang on a minute. I'm, I'm just curious. It could be a Youth Academy product who I'm not, a, not familiar with. Okay. Igor... Slominkov, okay. So, well, looking by the kit there, as you guys see the blue, I'm assuming that's Zenit St. Petersburg that he's recently signed from. Okay, so they've got a right back. Interesting. Snodgrass sees the run of Kurt Zuma, who just loves to get forward. He's going to pop this one into the box to Rashford! And just before the fifth minute, Peter Cech has a save on target. I'm surprised Zuma got so high up there. And Marcus Rashford against Igor Slaminkov, I think that's how you say his name. I'm more than likely butchering it. Michael Carrick with the ball in. Chenko's going to get the ball. It's going to go to Dembele, though. Get a shot on target. Oh, Monreal with the deflection. It's going to be another corner kick. Who's come up? Dembele. Let's let's mix, mix things up. With the Ronaldo chop. Oh, okay, Carrick. Someone try to win that. Not a bad 
piece of play. It was sort of unscripted. Let's let Zuma put it back to uh, Jean-Luigi Donnarama and let's build it up from the back. And we're 1-0 down to Arsenal. Damn it. They have their shot on target converted. We don't have ours. We're 1-0 down against the Gunners just before the 14th. My defence was incredibly exposed. We just got done there by Oliver Giroud. I think it was Chenko with the missed time tackle. Coquelin, cool, come and collected. Smashes it. Makes it 3-1. We're 1-0 down. We haven't been 1-0 down in quite a while. Hopefully we can uh, come back from this. We need the points. Dembele, Rashford. We're really clustered here, which I don't like. Oh, come on, Leroy Sane. Ah, that's dreadful. That's absolutely fucking woeful, Leroy. You've got to be doing 10 times better than that. Chenko out of position again, but Jean-Luigi Donnarama has just saved the 2-1. Snodgrass, Dembele, come on, if you can beat Koscielny, that'll be excellent. The two Frenchmen, oh, Dembele whipping and weaving, he's credit. Sane puts it wide to Zuma, who is the only goal scorer for the youngsters so far. Oh, here we go, Snodgrass with the cutback, he's been fouled in the box. Oh... He stuck his arm out there. Oh, hang on. Oh, Zuma's been fouled. Fuck off with this shit, man. All right, it's time to make some substitutions. We won nil down against Arsenal. Um, I'm probably going to bring on Lindelof because Regani's got a, a yellow. Um, yeah, should I bring on? Should I bring on Sin? Like the, this front three isn't working for whatever reason. Should I leave Regani on and try and just go back to our old front three? Long, Sinclair, McGeady. Let's do that. Let's try and change things up because we're 1-0 down. I spent a full match with those youngsters up top and they're just not really performing. Dembele's been excellent, but he's exhausted now. Long finds McGeady. He's already pressing and harrowing here, McGeady. Squares it to Shane Long and gets the shot on fucking target. We should have scored there. We should be at least... We should be 2-1 against Arsenal here today. Sanchez is going to win the header. Oh, Chenko. He's going to win it back here, Chenko. Who puts it into the box. Come on, Sanchez. Convert this! That's so unlucky for the Portuguese, man. He's going to get back on it, though, hopefully. Oh, Alexis Sanchez. You cheeky bugger. He's also come on with uh, Ozil. How has Ozil gotten to that? Chenko's had a stinker. We're 2-0 down against Arsenal. This is our biggest defeat of the season. It's not like we've been playing bad either. We've been playing some very, very entertaining football. We've been creating chances left, right and centre. We just can't convert them. Look at this ball over the top. Like, why is... Who, who is that? Brady's not... Why is Brady just ball watching there? And Chenko completely mistimed the out header. Ozil, fresh off the bench, scores his fifth goal of the Premier League. Embarrassing, guys. The full-time whistle has blown. We've claimed a 2-0 vict uh, not victory, loss over Arsenal. That's disappointing. I've just been playing shit in this episode. Well, I don't know. I've been playing alright, I think. We just couldn't convert our chances. See, look at that. We've had 7-5, to 3-3. Damn it, a 1-1 draw against Liverpool, where we had the lead for 80. We managed to only lose 2-1 against Arsenal, which, yeah, I, I said it was I said it was embarrassing that we're losing 2-1 before. I, I was just more so frustrated. If Celtic in real life, look at that header from Rashford, though. <sighs> if Celtic in real life lost to Arsenal 2-1, it wouldn't have been that bad. But the way we played, we deserved it. That was awful from Chenko. He cost us the points there. And he also completely mistimed the header against Ozil. So maybe I should drop him, bring off Lindelof. That was dreadful from Sane. He should have got a shot on target. But anyway, guys, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. hope you have enjoyed this video. I'm hoping it was entertaining. Oh, my God. Donnarama only just got to that. Smothered it. Yeah, I hope you guys have uh, still enjoyed it, even though... 
we lost. But yeah, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my social media links, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below. If you guys want to get yourself some cheap and reliable games, maybe FIFA 17, maybe Football Manager, maybe some PSN and Xbox codes, check out my G2A affiliation link in the description below. Patreon and Steam group in the description below as well. Thanks for watching. Take care. Stay tuned for more videos on the channel. My name has been Simsy. Take care. Goodbye. Mares whips it into the box. Royce! That is just ridiculous. With the layup, Marco Royce. Holy shit.